Good evening, everyone. I'm Dr. Sarah Mustafa from Dances Channel Online. Welcome to today's webinar about anomalies from orthodontics perspective. While we are waiting for the participants to join the session, I will introduce you to our company. Dantes Channel Online is a digital dental media company. It is your marketing solution for dental events, product launches, workshops, and courses. We also provide a collection of scientific articles and blogs about different topics in dentistry. We work hard to be your first-hand information on the technological <coughs> advancements in the dental field. Now it's time to start the session about anomalies from orthodontics perspective. If you have any question about this topic, please feel free to ask it in the question and answer box, and we will answer each and every question at the end of the session. I will start by introducing today's session speaker, Dr. Ahmed Al-Fiki. Dr. Ahmed holds a bachelor degree in dental medicine and oral surgery and a diploma of membership in orthodontics from the, the Royal College of Surgeons. He has a general dentist at the Ministry of Health from 2008 until 2011 and an associate orthodontist in the Royal Dentist Center 6 October from 2011 until 2015. After that, he became MOR Training Program Director at Misri University for Science and Technology 6 October Egypt from 2015 until 2017. Then he worked as an orthodontist, permanent visitor at the Saudi German Hospital, KSA, from 2015 until 2017. Currently, he is working as an orthodontist at the Ram Clinics Industrial Lambu, KSA. Welcome, doctor. It's our pleasure to have you with us. The pleasure is mine. Um, uh, let me welcome. Uh, this is my first uh, session with Dentists Channel Online. And uh, thank you so much for your uh, for the effort of Dental Dentists Channel Online team and the effort uh, by you. And I hope uh, it won't be the last, inshallah. Inshallah. Okay, we'll start now. Uh, just open my presentation. Okay. Uh, today we will discuss anomalies, uh, dental anomalies, and uh, how to manage as an orthodontist. Of course, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm I'm speaking to uh, orthodontists as well as uh, orthodontist juniors and also uh, GP dentists who uh, admire to be uh, orthodontist uh, someday. So I will not get too deep in uh, this topic. I'll just, we will just have a brainstorming discussion that uh, will make you uh, aware uh, when you face any dental anomaly in your practice and how to manage as an orthodontist and as a GP as well. Okay, so <clears throat> to, to categorize anomalies uh, in uh, dental practice, uh, we have, uh, uh, it could be in tooth number, in tooth surface, and in tooth size. First, we speak about anomalies in tooth number, and uh, we have either supernumerary teeth or uh, missing teeth. First, we'll discuss supernumerities. And as you see here, this is uh, a simple categorization of supernumerities. We have either single or multiple. For the single one, we have conically shaped supernumerary tooth. We have odontomas, which are either complex or compound. Tubercle, which is a barrel shaped uh, supernumerary uh, structure and supplemental supernumerary tooth. Supplemental supernumerary tooth is actually an identical to its adjacent. And the most common site is the premolar region. You might find the three premolars uh, either impacted or erupted. Here is a single supernumerary. And for the multiple, it could be non-syndromic or isolated supernumerary or syndromic. It occurs in cleft lip and palate, Down syndrome, cleidocranial syndrome, and Gardner syndrome. Uh, here's the different shapes of supernumerary uh, teeth. This shape is conical, and the most famous for conical supernumerary is the mesiodense. Mesiodense is a supernumerary tooth, or not a tooth, it's actually a dental structure that emerge between in the midline between the adult central incisor. And uh, uh, 
you might find that at eight years or seven years, not erupted yet. So don't panic, it will eventually erupt. So what you are going to tell the patient is we shall wait till it's erupted and then remove it. And fortunately, it doesn't result in any infection. So the central incisor will erupt normally, but we will get a large diastema. It will be more than uh, two or three millimeters. So the good, the good management is to wait. If you, uh, if you uh, saw a patient who is seven years or eight years, and you find in its OPG that there is uh, mesiodens, you should inform the guardian, we shall wait for another one year or, or one year and a half, and it will erupt spontaneously. Uh, other form of supernumerary, this is a tubercle or barrel-shaped supernumerary. On the contrary of mesiodens, it results in tooth impaction. So 100% uh, chance you will get a central incisor impaction. So if you find it erupted, like in this picture, as you can see, you will pull it immediately. And we will speak later about central incisor infection in details. Other types of supernumerary are the distal molar tooth, which is just to the last molar, especially the maxilla, and the paramolar, which is adjacent to a premolar. Is the two types of compound odontom. This is the shape of compound odontom, which is more or less a defined dental structure. We call it a defined dental structure. And the complex odontom, as you can see from the X-ray and the clinically, it's so haphazard. It's not defined. Okay. And uh, the implication of such uh, a supernumerary structure with compound odontom it may or may not result in tooth impaction, but with complex, 100% you will get a tooth impaction. So, so you will, uh, uh, the proper management is to make a CBCT and surgically expose the field, remove the, uh, the, the odontoma. And according to the developing stage of the teeth, uh, like if, if, uh, if it was discovered during the, uh, from eight to uh, 12 years, uh, the roots of the permanent teeth uh, are underdeveloped. So we'll just close the flap and the weight, it will, uh, the teeth will erupt spontaneously. But uh, after 12 years old, we should open the field, uh, remove the odontoma and also put an attachment on the impacted teeth for orthodontic traction. In this case, we find here, as you can see, we have three premolar teeth. It, most, it is most common in the uh, mandible. You will not find it in maxilla. And uh, it may be syndromic or non syndromic. This is a non syndromic. Uh, Super, supplemental supernumerary. Also, it may be syndromic in case of cleidocranial dysplasia. Most common supernumerary and cleidocranial dysplasia are the supplemental type of supernumerary. Also, it may, uh, it may occur in the uh, lateral incisor. You will find the supplemental lateral incisor. This is an OPG of a severe uh, cleidocranial dysplasia, as you can see here, multiple supplemental supernumerary, as well as uh, uh, impaction in the premolar region, also in the canine region. And this is the extra oral feature uh, of cleidocranial dysplasia. This is a severe form. Uh, uh, of course, there is a, a range of variation in the types of cleidocranial dysplasia. The most severe one we will have a complete absence of the clavicle, as it's shown in uh, this photo. Okay. The second type for anomalies in tooth number is uh, missing teeth or hypodontia. And 
we are talking here about congenitally missing teeth, not the one lost due to trauma or extraction, photo extraction, or extensive caries or whatever. Uh, the most common uh, type is the lateral incisor agenesis. Uh, and of course, for the lateral incisor uh, uh, agenesis, uh, it may be bilateral or unilateral. There is a different way of management of both types. And usually like 80%, as I saw in 100% of, uh, of the cases in my practice, if you have a unilateral uh, lateral incisor agenesis, you will find it's contralateral, uh, pig shaped uh, or conical. Uh, so uh, uh, according to the sagittal relation, we may pull out and just close the space and make the canines mimicking the lateral or open the space if it's plus three and put a dental uh, implant. Uh, and the types of hypodontia are various. Uh, uh, if you see uh, less than six teeth missing, uh, this is normal hypodontia. More than six teeth is called oligodontia, like you see in this, sorry, in this OPG. More than 60s missed here. It's called oligodontia. And the complete absence of the of dentition is called anodontia. This is extremely rare one. The second most site for incisor of uh, hypodontia is the lower premolar region. Of course, this is a case of very uh, very faulty management. Uh, lower second premolar agenesis, I you, you should understand that this case could be treated better. Why? Uh, usually, when there is a, a, a second premolar agenesis, there is an enclosed E. And for your information, not all primary dentition should be pulled out. Uh, E's and C's, if there is no uh, successor, it will live uh, in some papers like Jerkelin, he stated on a survey that it lives for more than 40 years and 50 years. So as a tip for also GP or uh, pedodontist, please, please, please do not pull out lower second primary molar from a child without an OPG. And also for your information, the development of five, maybe late in age, uh, uh, maybe start at nine years. You, you might take an OPG for an eight, year, an eight, an eight years child and you will not, you will not find a, a premolar, uh, uh, second premolar. So just be patient and wait. Uh, you will be confident uh, 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 at 10 years old. If you, if you don't find the second premolar, uh, then you should refer to an orthodontist to decide if we have crowding, we might pull out E, we might uh, uh, just do a stripping to relieve the crowding. But in such a case, we have a very mild crowding and he came to the practice because uh, another dentist uh, 40, had 40 extraction of uh, lower ease, and we didn't need to pull out ease in such a case. The most famous uh, syndrome related to hypodontia is called ectodermal dysplasia. And from its name, its appearance, there is a defective uh, formation of uh, any structures that develop from ectoderm. Uh, you'll find very sparse hair, defective nails, and uh, paleness. This for extraoral feature, and this is, as you can see here from OPG, this is called, as I said before, oligodontia. As I told before, here we find a unilateral uh, hypodontia missing two, and on the contralateral side, there is a pig shaped. To this 
usually happens for like more than 80% of the cases with unilateral agenesis. This is called submerged E or enclosed E. We have no successor here. It should be left as it is. As long as you don't have caries, you don't have root resorption, the tooth is intact, just leave it in its place. Please don't pull it out. Here is a big shaped lateral, and this is the conical type. Uh, Uh, of microdontia and in this picture you will see just a very large central incisor especially related to the uh, one on the contralateral side other forms of anomalies in two, in two sides gemination which is a complete division of one two spot twinning uh, complete division you will find this is the type we call supernumerary supplemental uh, teeth and fusion. You'll find the fusion here in the crown part of two adjacent uh, teeth. Concrescence, you will find the junction here at the acellular cementum of uh, the roots of two adjacent teeth. Here's the germination, which is complete division. And I will jump to fusion here, as you can see. You can tell from the clinical picture that this is emanation and the other one is fusion. How? You'll find the fissure in the germination just at the center of the uh, crown of the tooth. In the fusion, you will find it just deflected just a little bit from the center. Uh, this is called twinning. As you can see, the junction here of the roots. Of course, it's very important to diagnose twinning, especially during extraction, you might pull out the other tooth <clears throat> on the way. And this is called concrescence. A deformity in the root structure is called dilaceration, which is a curvature in the apical set of a dental root. As you can see here in the third molar, and it's very common actually in infected central incisor. And this, this is a clinical picture of an infected central incisor with dilaceration. And uh, uh, this tooth will not get out spontaneously as it's apparent. And here's the clinical uh, picture after pulling out the tooth. It could be aligned. It could be leveled into the arch, but we might need to open the field, make epistectomy, and in the same visit, we put an attachment for orthodontic uh, traction. Of course, anchorage, vertical anchorage should be pre prepared uh, prior to uh, surgical exposure. And in the two sides or the dental structure, of course, the famous amelogenesis and perfecta with both types. The different uh, for immediate diagnosis, you'll find the hypoplastic type. You will see the normal shape with just a slight yellowish shadow on the facial surface of the teeth. Here with the hypermaturation uh, type, there is no enamel or a defective formation of enamel and antinogenesis imperfecta. You will see here on the X-ray, you will diagnose it better. There's just uh, uh, just slight radiolucency throughout the two structure. So uh, the implication of such an anomaly in uh, our orthodontic field it, it, is that you cannot bond uh, it, Teeth with amelogenesis and perfecta with the conventionalist. You will need a different approach to bond uh, such a tooth. Uh, so uh, we will do pretreatment with sodium hypochlorite on the facial surface of the teeth. And for recommendation, we can use glass enamel uh, cementation for bonding, not for banding, for bonding. We, it's also a bonding material. We use glass enamel cement or uh, we also could use uh, resin, uh, resin reinforced 
uh, glass anomaly or resin cement. The famous type is called Fuji 2. Of course, Fuji 2 for also, not for uh, attachment of the uh, crown and veneers. Another deformity is fluorosis, and the fluorosis we, uh, with uh, simple uh, words, is just over crystallization or hyper mineralized uh, enamel. It occurs in just underdeveloped communities uh, who, uh, for a long time, uh, have been drinking uh, water from, uh, from wells and stuff like that. And as a special consideration, we preferably we make <coughs> microabrasion with aluminum oxide or calcium carbide first before starting uh, bonding with our conventional way using phosphoric acid. Or of uh, also we will use composite uh, brackets or glass anomer uh, cement uh, for enhancing the bond strength of fluorosed. Enamel. As a form of anomalies, it's called turodontism. And as a general rule, anomalies always come associated. If you have a genesis or hypodontia, just search for uh, a turodontism. And this is this. you will find hypodontia together with turodontism in the molars and the class three malocclusion. Okay, so if you see a genesis or hypodontia, just observe closely the, your OPG and uh, uh, try to find or to discover any tools with turodontism. Turodontism is just, as you can see, a very long root trunk and the lengths of the roots are not very small here. And the clinical significance of such an anomaly is that the center of rotation here becomes too low. And there is a long distance from the point of force application, which is a bracket or the band or whatever, and the center uh, of rotation. And the result will be severe tipping of the teeth. Even if we use very rigid arch, uh, arch wires, there will be uh, tipping. So in such a case, for myself, if I see a molar, I, 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 I'm, with turodontism, I'm not using it as uh, a mean uh, of uh, sagittal anchorage. I usually use uh, TADs or temporary anchorage devices, mini screws just to retract the canine or uh, retract the incisor. I will not put any extra force on such a tooth. Also, uh, we have the carabelli cusp here. I use a larger size of band or the tube if I don't have it. And the talon cusp, talon cusp, its clinical significance after termination of the treatment, it, 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 make, it make it difficult for us to put a fixed retainer. We uh, just uh, may terminate the fixed retainer here, cut it here and use an extra uh, SX retainer over it. Okay. Uh, now I will talk about tooth impaction, uh, which is uh, the most noted anomaly you find in your dental uh, practice. And the most famous are the maxillary impacted canine for by central incisor followed by uh, lower fibers. Uh, the etiology of impaction, you, we must understand very good, are either obstruction, idiopathic, or uh, uh, genetics. Also incomplete obstruction, for example, uh, 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 incomplete resorption of uh, deciduous uh, teeth roots, odontoma, as I said before, especially the uh, complex type of odontoma, any other pathologies like dentigerous cyst, as well as crowding, two size arch lens deficiency and soft tissue infection, especially with sick gingival biotype. 
idiopathic, idiopathic where there is no uh, obstruction and just the posterior teeth fail to erupt uh, spontaneously for a non uh, reason. This is called the primary failure of eruption. And in some syndromes like GAPO, Rutherford, osteoglophonic dysplasia, and the mucopoly sarcoidosis. Abnormal eruptive uh, path due to any trauma and uh, dilaceration, of course, and ankylosis. And uh, for trauma and dilaceration, the impacted tooth must pop up in your head is the central incisor one. And ankylosis, the most famous is the impacted lower fives because its predecessor is already ankylosed. It cannot erupt spontaneously. Endocrine disorders, hyperthyroidism, hyperparathyroidism, hyperpituitarism, hyperimmunoglobulin. Others, drug induced like phenytoin. For the impacted canine, it uh, begins development at four to five years from the floor of the eye and then start to descend in a vertical pathway to its uh, original uh, position. And the uh, most uh, significant clinical feature is a labial bulge. You should palpate a labial bulge at the age of 10 years. And it should be your routine of a 10 years old child to palpate, just to feel the maxillary canine. And you, be, you assure the patient that it will erupt spontaneously. Uh, uh, for the prevalence, uh, it's 2% two, two of population have impacted maxillary canine, 15% of them are buccally impacted and 85% palatally impacted. And the females more than males. So <coughs> this is very important to when you find uh, a patient guardian who's, uh, who, who, who don't, doesn't care too much about the, the dental health and he will ask you, uh, so doctor, what will happen if I just leave it there, if we will not intervene uh, now? The answer is that it's too dangerous to leave an infected canine for long time. And in terms of possibility, uh, it could uh, have a cystic transformation, cystic transformation, the digital cyst, which eventually uh, uh, may develop to uh, amyloblastoma. Also, it may affect it adjacent teeth, especially uh, root resorption of the adjacent uh, lateral incisor, uh, loss of arch, and of course, crowding and midline uh, shifts. Diagnosis clinically, as I said before, here is you'll find the labial polish and also color change. In this region, you find the gingiva here become, on pulling the check, you will find it uh, a bit whiter. And also, you can diagnose an impacted canine from the lateral incisor inclination. So, for example, this one, as you can see, if you find the lateral incisor inclined toward the palate, it means we have a possible palatally impacted canine. And I'm talking about inclination, not position or it comes out due to crowding or loss of space. It usually erupts with a normal inclination. But if you have, uh, uh, if you see uh, a patient with an inclined or change in torque of the lateral incisor, immediately you suspect an impacted canine. I'll just try to illustrate more. Like this one. The inclination toward the buccal side. So you expect the impacted canine just to push 
the root of the lateral incisor lingually, which may result in such a tipping and such a clinical feature. So as I said before, dental anomalies are associated. They came and come together. Uh, you'll, you may find in a case with an impacted canine, you will find hypodontia, microdontia, transposition, also uh, uh, impacted first molar and infra occluded serious molar. Diagnosis with parallel techniques, uh, parallax technique with two uh, periapical x ray, and also using one occlusal radiograph together with panoramic radiograph. CT and uh, uh, I'll give you a tip to diagnose uh, impacted K9 and to localize it from a single OPG. Uh, if you see this picture here, this OPG, you will find this impacted K9 is a bit larger than its contralateral one, which means that it's closer to the X-ray beam or closer to the X-ray uh, cone and subjected to more magnification. So to diagnose and localize an impacted canine from one single radiograph, you must check the sizes. And this indicates that this tooth are, is impacted palatally, palatally. And if you find it smaller than its contralateral one, it means that it's impacted buccally. The prognosis of uh, the, the impacted canine just to come out uh, spontaneously or with orthodontic treatment depends on the inclination, uh, a prox uh, proximity to the midline, as you can see. the height of the crown, I'll just to make it uh, short, uh, uh, I will tell you the favorable uh, canine for either spontaneous eruption or uh, orthodontic traction, maybe your palatal position of the, uh, of the canine crown should be in midway, not too much palatal or too much buccal. Libio-palatal position of the root apex. Condition of the retained C. If they, uh, here is, as you can see, there is root resorption which favors the eruption of the maxillary canine. Root resorption of uh, upper lateral incisor. If you find in the OPG any root resorption, it means that the impacted uh, tooth are unfavorable, also root dilaceration, because it's very difficult and it takes too much time to just track the uh, impacted canine to its normal position. And also any signs of ankylosis. This is a very important. Uh, uh, if a patient age, if a patient with an impacted canine at age more than 33 years old, there's a chance of ankylosis. And just to make sure, if you decide to open the, uh, the field and put an attachment, you must use or take the surgeon to use uh, uh, just an elevator to check the mobility of the impacted uh, canine. For the surgeries of impacted canine, I usually do it myself. I took the anesthesia training and I prefer to do it myself. Just uh, it's a trust problem with the surgeon. I don't, I don't like second surgeries as all. And uh, it, it, it feels uh, uh, it just, it, 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 it feels, you know, uh, better to me in handling a case just to do it uh, myself. Because in such a case, to make sure the, uh, the canine uh, is a bit mobile is very relieving. 
it, it's very uh, uh, giving me an idea of the success uh, rate of the case. Uh, the factors affecting the decision of either remove the tooth or uh, uh, orthodontically tract it, his age, dental health. If the patient is well, of course, for uh, dental surgery, availability of space, prognosis of retained C if present. So if you have an impacted canine, which is away from the C's root, and you have a sound C. As I said before, C's long live. Long live, you can leave it there, surgically remove the impacted canine, and you can enhance the aesthetic of the patient uh, with composite veneers or uh, laminate veneers on the C itself, okay? If you find the primary tools, especially C's and E's, it doesn't mean you should pull it out, okay? This is an advice you must give to all your fellow uh, dentists, especially fresh graduates. Take care, be careful with C's and E's, okay? You are making a trouble for the patient and for us orthodontists in, a manage, uh, in managing any case. Uh, also, the factors affecting the decision, condition of the adjacent teeth, uh, 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 root resorption, agenesis. Of course, if you have a lateral agenesis, you will keep the canine. Of course, there's no question about it. Okay, and also pick shaped lateral, you might remove it and substitute it with the adjacent impacted canine. Patient motivation, because it, it takes a very long time. In some cases, in some cases, more than two years, two years and a half, and also three years if we just count uh, like four or five missed visits during the whole treatment, medical contraindication of surgery and suitability of upper cause to replace upper canines. Cause of poor treatment outcome, adult over 30 years, we have a 30% risk of ankylosis poor surgery, damage, uh, damage to adjacent teeth, or not good uh, exposure, uh, not good removal of the adjacent bone, and uh, uh, just opening a very small aperture that will result in subsequent gingival inflammation. It, it, it's very hard to us to uh, redo the surgery and put our attachment again. Uh, in case of cystic or malignant transformation, of course, no treatment. If we have a dental cyst uh, with the assistance of uh, a professional surgeon, it must be open. We'll do mycephalization and tract the impacted canine. Now we'll talk about the prevalence and etiology of impacted central incisor. <clears throat> the etiology will be soft tissue, like mucosal, Barrier in gingival uh, biotype, also trauma in, uh, in a child uh, during, uh, in the school or in the playgrounds, it will result in deflection in the pathway of eruption of the central incisor. And of course, dilaceration of the root of the central incisor. This is a radiographic picture. Okay, you'll see it in OPG like this, just facing you like this. Okay, and it is the shape of a dilacerated impacted central incisor with lateral colometric. Diagnosis. First thing you do in diagnosis is to ask the patient guardian, has he or she hit before? Uh, has she fall down? And uh, uh, had she had any kind of accident before? It will be an open question. And uh, uh, it's very important to, open, to ask 
open question. Don't force the patient to uh, uh, reply you with, uh, don't push him to answer the, the answer you want. You need to know, Leave, let him talk, let him tell you the history and ask always open questions. Uh, possibility of well-hidden abuse and you will find it with the obstinate behavior of the child itself. You find the child not talkative, even doesn't scream, doesn't shout. So you might conclude there is, uh, that there is, uh, the child is subjected to uh, some form of uh, parental abuse. Medical history or uh, surgeries, uh, especially in cleft uh, lip and palate patient. Okay, clinical diagnosis of practice center, central incisor is very uh, simple. It's a first tooth to erupt. So if you have a child nine years old who is fully erupted central incisor and lateral incisor, it means uh, we have an impacted central incisor. Also palpation and you can palpate high up here near the tip of the nose. You can tip it inside especially the dilacerated type of impacted central incisor. And of course, the radiographic picture. So uh, uh, how to manage an impacted central incisor? If we, the deflection from the pathway is not too severe, okay? And the patient age is less than 10 years, just remove the uh, uh, remove A's or the predecessor and just wait. If the patient is eight years old, nine years old, wait for a whole one year. If the patient is 10 years old, just pull out uh, uh, the primary tooth and wait for another six months. But if you find dilaceration or uh, uh, supernumerary, tooth obstruction, especially the tubercular type uh, of tooth and also complex or compound pedontoma. You should uh, uh, just expose the field to the surgery, remove the supernumerary tooth, and to avoid second surgery that put, a, put an attachment and uh, close the flap over the attachment. Like I, I like to use gold chain attached to the uh, palatal surface of the uh, maxillary central incisor and the close the whole flap. I, I don't like in such a case to make very uh, uh, epically displace the flap. It, it, uh, it should be close the flap eruption and the attachment much better for aesthetic and to avoid future uh, recession to be on the palatal uh, side of the crown of the impacted central incisor. Other types of impaction, as I said before, mandibular second premolar impaction. Most of the cases of enclosed E, in my practice, I didn't find any impacted premolar with enclosed, but it happens. It happens that if, if you have enclosed E, I mean, if the patient's 16 years old, okay, and you find clinically a submerged E, of course, you will take an OPG and search for a premolar. Most, uh, most time you will not find it, but if it's found, okay, it means we have impacted and the prognosis, of course, depends on the, uh, uh, the severity of the deflection of the impacted premolar. So if the deflection is not too far, we will pull out the uh, E and wait for some time. And if it's deflected away and may cause root reception of the adjacent uh, molar roots, immediately we'll open a flap and put an attachment on the impacted uh, five, sorry, five. As an impaction line maxillary first molar, which is uh, not totally impacted. It may result in remaining root of seven. 
maxillary ferrous molar are not totally impacted, just a lock between the uh, distal uh, marginal ridge under the uh, lock of the mesial uh, part under the distal marginal ridge of uh, five. We, we might dislock or disimpact the tooth with a separator or a brass wire and tightening the brass wire in this manner. Or also we might use a removable appliance with a pushing spring just to uh, remove the lock from the impacted molar. Also mandibular canine and mandibular canine is not a common, it's very extremely rare impaction. And it happens 95% of the cases due to a, a, a disorder called transmigration. Transmigration. Uh, a patient comes to you and of course, the first thing you do as an orthodontist, it doesn't differ being a, a, a beginner orthodontist or an expert orthodontist, you count the teeth, okay? Uh, I'm, I'm 10 years in the field and I'm, I keep count the teeth because I, I might miss, uh, uh, if you find absent lower canine in the dental arch, 190% or more than 90%, it means the tooth has transmigration. Transmigration is that it like floats in the bone, in the chin, and also gets through the midline to the other side, as you can see here. In my practice, I, I saw only one. Uh, one of my patients has transmigration. Of course, the treatment is surgical exposure. Uh, prior to orthodontic treatment, if, uh, if it has any uh, means of obstruction for the moving uh, teeth or just with periodic uh, OPG and examination and preferably uh, do it after orthodontic treatment if there is no uh, obstruction to orthodontic uh, tooth movement. Also another anomaly we'll discuss today is transposition. In the transposition, uh, simply meaning a tooth in a place of another tooth. Uh, it, we have two types of transposition, either true or false, we call it pseudo transposition. The true transposition, you will find the whole tooth and the root apex in a place of the adjacent teeth. False or pseudo transposition, the, the root apices will be in their respective normal position, and there is that uh, in that normal position and just the crowns are overlapping like this. In the coding or the naming of uh, transposition, this is called favored classification. Just to describe any case of transposition, if you refer the patient to an orthodontist or even to uh, uh, present your case, MX or MN for maxilla and mandible. C means K9. K9 for the premolar, you put P1 or P2. For the lateral, you put L1 uh, or L2. Uh, so like this nomenclature, MX.C.P1, it means you have a transposition in the maxilla. Okay. The K9 tooth in a place of premolar in the first premolar tooth is actually the most common common MXCP1 second MXC uh, L2 canine in place of a lateral incisor followed by MXC uh, uh, L1 and MXC M1 for the mandible uh, MNL2C, letter and size on a place of canine. Sorry, this is. And 
uh, MNCL1. <coughs> Management of transposition is very easy, but you, in, in, in difficult cases, uh, you must refer to a periodontist just to avoid uh, any adhesions during orthodontic uh, tooth movement. If you have a pseudo or false uh, transposition and there is no dehiscence, you will just try to align the teeth in their normal position. And with complete transposition, you will align the teeth in uh, 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 their respective position. For example, if we have a maxillary canine in place of lateral incisor, we will level and align the maxillary canine in this position, okay? And after termination of orthodontic treatment, after finishing the orthodontic treatment, we refer to uh, uh, restorative dentistry for uh, making veneers, making crowns, to enhance the aesthetics of the patient. Now I'll show you some uh, random cases from my practice. In this case, here is unilateral lateral incisor genesis. And as we should always expect, the other one is pig shaped or conical shaped. In such case, with class two uh, mal occlusion, I prefer to remove this one and just space closure and uh, according to Kokech, uh, to uh, I, don't, I don't remember now, but it's uh, uh, better to close the space and make the canines mimic uh, the lateral incisor and we will bring the premolars in place of the, uh, uh, in place of the canines. Of course, the space closure is much better in class two cases. Space opening for doing an implant is much better in class three male occlusion. This is a case of impacted canine, which here the canine erupt spontaneously. Okay. And the uh, prognosis is very good. Okay. It's uh, actually uh, erupted and we, uh, I plan to remove the seeds and start aligning the impacted canine. Another case with uh, uh, transposition, as you can see here. If we name it, I will say MXCL2. I mean, we have from the CT here, you can see that the lateral incisor or the canine in place of each other, okay? And it's not totally a complete tram transposition. My plan here is just to drag the lateral incisor away from the roots to avoid any form of dehiscence. We have an, uh, uh, a remaining C here, just to drag it here towards the palate, start traction and aligning with the canine and then we put it back in its normal position because it's not a complete uh, transposition. Here's a case with a buccal impacted uh, tooth. If it's near to the dental arch, I just make gingivectomy here. And on the other side, I make closed eruption technique because it's very high above the mucogingival uh, junction. is a surgery. After I put the attachment, I hold the attachment and try just to shake it. Very good, pull it out because I cannot stand a second with a stand. Another case of uh, a genesis is bilateral, a genesis of the two lateral incisors. Of course, I use a face, uh, face mask here, as I said before, it's very common to find hypodontia associated with class three mal occlusion. For such a case, for such a case, space closure is very uh, dangerous because it uh, make the uh, the class three mal occlusion more severe. It increases the reverse overjet, 
So even during uh, uh, active orthodontic treatment, I make sagittal anchorage using the reverse uh, pull, hood, uh, pull head gear uh, with 150 uh, gram forces just to uh, keep the sagittal relation as it is during either space closure or uh, space opening. The space closure of bilateral uh, genesis of two lateral incisor. And we made here uh, crown lengthening just to make the premolar as much as we could mimic uh, the canine. And this is a canine here in a place of a lateral incisor. We try also to make it looks like a lateral incisor. We have here microdontia, two pick shaped lateral after aligning in the normal position with good inclination. Mega composite veneers just to restore its normal looks. Another case of impacted canine, and you can see from this OPG the deflection and the impinging from the impacted canine crown on the root of the maxillary lateral incisor. And here is a deflection or the change in inclination of the lateral incisor. And just try to think this one from a single OPG. This canine is buccally or palatally impacted. Okay, I'll check the other one on the other side. It's smaller than, so this one is palatally impacted canine and the other one is buccally impacted canine. If it needs to the dental arch below the gingival, uh, mucogingival junction, we'll do gingivectomy. And for the palatal impacted canine, I just make a close eruption technique. Here is an impacted canine. And after, because it was a class two case, I pulled out the upper cream walls and the start incisor retraction. Of course, after leveling and aligning and uh, fixing the uh, crown torque of the impacted canine. This is a case of multiple missing teeth, which is a very, I saw to my practice is a very mild form of uh, ectodermal dysplasia. And of course, with the spacing and with missing teeth, the teeth will come up rotated, especially uh, premolars. It also has, as you can see, distinctive labial frenum. I close the space first and I made phrenectomy here. Just the scar tissue will help to retain uh, uh, the teeth and make it more stable after the space closure. Here is an open bite case, and you can see here an enclosed E. I just lift it in its place. Okay, I didn't bond it because it won't move. And I lift it, I didn't extract. Why do I extract such a such a, a tooth and to close the space here, okay? With, and uh, I, I get more vulnerable to uh, uh, two stepping, uh, uh, opening the bite. I just keep it in its way. And uh, 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 it, it's not aesthetically important, but if you, if the patient asks for it, you make a composite buildup just to make a normal occlusion with the opposing dentition. Here is a case. This is an enclosed E and submerged. And this submersion is due to, uh, because the, uh, uh, the, the patient vertically grow and because this enclosed the bone doesn't grow vertically in this side. And you can see I left it here because it's totally sound. No retrosorption, no caries. It's mesiodens. I wait until it comes out, pull it out, and then closing the diastema. And this is impacted mandibular uh, K9 with open flap, and this is called closed eruption technique. Also enclosed E, left in place. And here you find there is no also in this exact positions, there is no transverse growth. So 
you will find the enclosed E more lingual than the other dentition. Okay, I'll finish my presentation now. Thank you so much. Thank you, doctor, for this amazing session and uh, those beautiful cases. Uh, meanwhile, I'll ask your permission to introduce our company to all the participants. And I request all the participants to kindly put their questions in the question and answer box if they have any. So, doctor, can you please stop sharing your screen so I can share mine? Thank you. <clears throat> this is our organization, Dantes Channel Online, Healthy Smiles, Wealthy Lives. Dentist Channel Online is a leading dental media company that aims to spread awareness and knowledge regarding various aspects of dentistry. We conduct regular webinars and courses on different areas of dentistry. Being a prime member with Dentist Channel Online brings you several opportunities, accredited webinars and dental courses. So if you're not a prime member yet, kindly join our family to get free certificate of participation after every event and get exclusive offers and discount on our online and on-site dental workshops and courses. This is an example of the certificate of participation that you will get after every event. About our upcoming webinars, we have a webinar with Dr. Jasmine Haddad uh, how to instantly deliver world-class patients experience, minimize complaints, grow your profit without burnouts. This webinar is today at 9 p.m. Indian Standard Time. On Sunday, December 19, we have a session with Dr. Sneha about sports dentistry, a new career dimension in dentistry at 11.30 a.m. Indian Standard Time. And another session with Dr. Zafar Abbas about aesthetic facial anatomy, also on Sunday, December 19, at 1.30 p.m. Indian Standard Time. Dr. Ibrahim Abdel Munim will be giving two sessions about bonding in dentistry, first one happening on Sunday, December 19, at 7 p.m. Indian Standard Time, and the second part will be on Sunday, December 26, also at 7 p.m. Indian Standard Time. I would like to tell you that we have another session with Dr. Ahmed next Friday. The event will be published in the coming weeks, in the coming days, sorry. Uh, with Dr. Mahmoud Ramadan, we will have a session about implant assisted overdenture happening on Sunday, December 26 at 5 p.m. Indian Standard Time. About our upcoming courses, we have an on-site course about implantology with Dr. Mohammed and Dr. Anuj, starting on January 6 until January 9, each day from 9 a.m. until 7 p.m. Indian Standard Time in Cochin. So if you want to uh, register to this course, kindly check this number. This is a five days, 50 hours intensive coaching course. I request all the participants to kindly save this number and send a message on WhatsApp with their name so they will be added to our broadcast list and they will receive everything about our upcoming dental webinars and courses. Today's webinar is sponsored by NovaMind. NovaMind offers a full spectrum of implants and prosthetic solutions that accommodate any clinical need in modern implantology. We successfully supply highly demanded dental implant types called internal hex, tissue level, bone level, and active conical connection. Our EU production unit and product quality is appreciated worldwide. Dental implants and dental restorative solutions produced, maintaining all the standards of EU medical device regulatory. Products are manufactured in Athens, Greece, and distributed worldwide with more than 1 million happy restorations. If you want to know more about NovaMind, kindly check their website. And last but not least, don't forget to follow us on our social media platforms, Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. 
You can find our recorded sessions on our YouTube channel and our Facebook page. So now it's time to see the question and answer box. Uh, it seems that everything was clear. We don't have any question. Thank you, doctor, for giving this informative webinar. It was a very nice presentation, very clear presentation, uh, and uh, you shared very beautiful cases at the end. I would like to thank you so much for sharing your knowledge and experience with us. Thank you, thank you so much. We are looking forward to organizing more webinars with you, and uh, see you next Friday. Sure, sure. Thank you, doctor. Thank you, everyone, for joining us today. And don't forget, to, don't forget to join us next Friday for another session with Dr. Ahmed about extractions in orthodontics. Thank you. Bye-bye.